1.1 is the first introduction to equations that we're going to do. And the equations are pretty straightforward. So a lot of these you maybe could solve mentally, but I'm going to ask you to follow a specific procedure because in the next lesson and in 1.3 and especially 1.3b, the equations are very complex or they, they can become very complex. And so I want to build that foundation of structure in 1.1. So I apologize if you think I'm making you do more work than you need to. Um, I'm just kind of setting us up for success in an upcoming lesson. The first vocabulary term we're going to look at is this thing called inverse operations. And do you know what inverse operations are? Inverse operations are operations that undo each other. And you can think of them maybe as opposites. For example, addition is the inverse of subtraction. And multiplication is the inverse of division. Because if you have addition and you want to remove it, you would subtract. If you have division and you want to remove it, you would multiply, etc. So like I said, we're going to build this foundation of structure. And the first one we're going to look at is example one, letter A. Now the first thing that you want to do when you have an equation is you want to separate into its two sides. And the two sides are on the one side of the equal sign. So we've got the left side of the equal sign and the right side of the equal sign and we separate it down that line because that's where the two portions are. And if something's equal that means that the left side is the same as the right side so in order for it to stay equal we have to keep it balanced by doing things to both sides equally. So you say to yourself, self, what operation do I have? And the operation that you have right here is subtraction. So what is the inverse of subtraction? What do you have to do to remove the subtraction? You would use addition. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And that will eliminate the 7 on the left. So all I have is x. And then negative 6 plus 7 is 1. So my solution here is 1. Now when you have an equation, you have an instant answer key. And the way that you have the instant answer key is by checking. So you want to rewrite the equation. But instead of x, we can put what we think x is. So I'll write 1 minus 7 equals negative 6. So you do the math over here and you say, what is 1 minus 7? And 1 minus 7 is negative 6. So you show that you got the same thing on both sides of the equation. And you put a little check mark or a smiley face or whatever you want to do to show that you got the same thing on both sides. All right, if you want to try example B on your own, go for it, pause the video, try it on your own. If not, follow along with me. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a line down the equal sign so I know where I'm going to do my inverse operations. And I say to myself, what operation do I have? I have addition. What's the inverse of addition? That's subtraction. So I'll subtract 3.4 from both sides. And that will remove it from the left. And all I'll have is y. 0.5 minus 3.4. Feel free to get your calculator out. That pause is me waiting for you to get your calculator. Uh, 0.5 minus 3.4 is negative 2.9. So we definitely want to check to make sure we got it right. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll write the equation, but I know what y is. So I'm going to write negative 2.9 plus 3.4 equals 0 0.5. Now, don't be a check faker. Actually type this in your calculator. I'm typing in my calculator right now. Negative 2.9 plus 3.4, I'm confirming that I get 0.5 and I do. So I show my reader, the left side gave me 0.5. I got 0.5 when I did this. And the right side is 0.5, so that checks. Now in the next example, you might freak out because you see the pi symbol. But I don't want you to because I want you to think of it like a pi. So visualize pies in your head, whether it's an apple pie or a cherry pie or a Oreo pie, whatever kind of pie you want. 
So here we go. Same steps, right? Regardless of what sort of symbols you see in the question, the steps are still the same. Draw a line down the equal sign. And you say to yourself, self, what operation do I have? I have addition. So I will do subtraction. And the question is, what are you subtracting? Well, you subtract whatever is being added. So 2 pi is being added. So 2 pi is what I will subtract. So I just have H. And now think about it. If you have three apple pies and you take away two apple pies, what do you have left? You'll have one pi left. Now, ideally, the best way to write that is just pi because if there's not a number in front, we assume it's one, so I'm just going to erase the one there. But if you want to leave the one there, you can. Um, but I'd like you to get in the habit of not doing that. So let's check it. So I have a pi, right, or one pi if you chose to leave the one, plus two pi equals three pi. So if I have one pi, and my friend brings two pies. How many pies do we have? We have three pies. So you get three pi on each side. So see this crazy symbol didn't really make a difference. All right, let's look at letter D. Now you're gonna freak out even more, hopefully not, because you have a pi and an x and it looks very bizarre, maybe something you've never seen before. But again, you say to yourself after you draw the line, what operation do I have? Now the operation you have here is you have a number, right? Pi is a number. Even though it's a symbol, it still represents a number. You have a number touching a letter. And anytime you have a number touching a letter, a number next to a letter, we call it a coefficient. Um, and you have multiplication. So the inverse of multiplication would be division. So I'm going to use the fraction bar, that fancy advanced fraction bar. I'm not going to use the division symbol because that's uh, used for lower grades. We like to use the fraction bar. So try not to use that little dot dot symbol that you learned years ago and I will divide on both sides. So I just have x on the left and then if you have something on the top of a fraction that's also on the bottom they cancel out as well. So the only thing I have left is 3. So let's check it. So I've got uh, pi and it, now instead of x, I'm going to put 3. And I'll put the parentheses um, because I don't want to put an x for times because then it looks like I still have the x. And then once you copy the equation down, you see, well, duh, that's like the exact same thing. It's just written backwards. So pi times 3 is the same as 3 pi. So you get 3 pi on the left, 3 pi on the right, and it checks. Sorry, that's a pi symbol, not a hashtag. 3 pi equals 3 pi. All right, last uh, example in this, letter E. Drop a line down the equal sign, and there's a little bubble, so maybe this is where you want to highlight uh, or annotate. Do you remember how to inverse a fraction? So I have a multiplication of a fraction, right? The fraction itself is the coefficient, as I referenced that vocabulary word before, it's being multiplied by n. So when you're multiplying by a fraction, do you remember from seventh grade how you inverse that? Well, hopefully you're saying multiply by the reciprocal. So you might want to annotate that if you didn't know. So the reciprocal of negative three-fourths is negative four-thirds. And if you don't know what a reciprocal is, you might want to write that down, you might want to look it up, or you might want to ask in class the next day. So I'm multiplying by negative 4 over 3. So in order to do that, I'll put the negative 2 over 1. These cancel out. I just have n equals. And the right-hand side gives me positive 8 over 3. I'm going to leave the improper fraction. Do not turn it into a decimal. One of the things that we're going to be doing as we go further in algebra is we're going to be leaving things in fraction form, not in decimal form. So I'm going to plug it in, negative 3 fourths. I'll use the dot this time just to spice things up a little. 8 thirds equals negative 2. So I have to check. Now, especially because I got a fraction answer, sometimes that freaks kids out. They think they got it wrong. So let's check it out. So negative 3 times 8 is negative 24 
over 12. Ah, I see it. Look, that's negative 2, right? Negative 24 over 12 is negative 2. So that checks. Boom. Move on to the next question. All right, now what's cool about multiple choice questions with equations is you can take the choices and you can plug them in and see which one works. So what I'd like you to do is pick a choice. Hopefully you're not a bad guesser and it doesn't take you four tries to get it. Pick a choice, plug it in, follow order of operations, remember PEMDAS, and see which one is correct. So pause the video now and try that. All right, hopefully you selected choice C, which is negative 3. When you plug in negative 3, you get 1 on the top, and 1 divided by 0.2 is 5. I know it sounds super bizarre, but when you divide by a decimal, numbers actually get bigger. All right, last one together. The melting point of a solid is the temperature at which the solid becomes a liquid. The melting point of bromine is 1 30th of the melting point of nitrogen. Write and solve an equation to find the melting point of nitrogen. Now, since we're first starting out, I've kind of given you a little setup. This is how we're going to write our equation, and then we'll solve it. So, here we go. The melting point of bromine is the first thing I need to find. Well, I, mm, it's not in the story. Oh, but it's right here in the picture. So, since I know the melting point of bromine, I will replace it with negative 7. When you see the word is in math, that means put an equal sign. So negative 7 equals, they tell me to put 1 30th right here, so I will do that. Of in math means times, so I'm going to put a dot. Don't use the x because that looks like a variable. So stop using x now because we're going to do a lot of things with variables from now on and also for the rest of your career in mathematics and it looks like a variable. And now I need to know the melting point of nitrogen. Well, that's actually what we're trying to find out, right? And solve an equation to find the melting point of nitrogen. So I'm gonna make a variable. So let's use N for nitrogen. It doesn't matter what it is. All right, so I'm just gonna rewrite this equation a little um, squished together so it looks more familiar to me. And instead of the dot, I'll just put the number next to the letter. So this is just like that example from the previous page. How do you inverse this fraction? Well, hopefully you didn't forget already. You multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 30th is 30 over 1. And those cancel. And I just have n left on the right. And if I put the negative 7 over 1, that gives me negative 210 over 1, which is just negative 210. So the melting point of bromine is negative 210 degrees Celsius. All right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.